All right, so let's talk a little bit about Big Brother, right? What, what do we think of chapter one? Let's start there. What was interesting about it? To say it. Is it like the idea of a dystopian, like any dystopian I would concur. Most dystopian, if you look at the, the movies that we watch that we really like, a lot of times it tends to be the end of the world stuff, the dystopian society, the Hunger Games, the, uh, the Maze Runners, um, the Terminator movies, right? Um, any zombie movie. A lot of people like zombie movies. So those dystopian novels tend, and movies and things like that tend to be interesting. Yes? Is it any different than how we live now? Is it really? Hold on a second, Joel. There is a saying, and it may not make make it may not make sense now, but it, it'll probably make sense in the future. Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. That doesn't make sense to you right now, but as we proceed through this book, you will understand what I'm talking about, and that'll actually um, lend itself to the question you just asked about how can you be a leader knowing that your followers are like how can it really? Yeah. No. No, they're just they're just hired guns to protect the party. Think vampires and werewolves during the day. They're just people that they pick from random and their whole purpose is to fight. There's, there's three main classes. There's the inner party, big brother, the outer party, and then proles. That's it. Yes, poor, uneducated, impoverished. That's 85% of the population. Exactly. So, so let's go ahead and skip to the second question on that. Why is it important that Winston has to start a journal, or has he that he started writing a journal? Rebellion. Go ahead. So what, uh, what, what do you think writing represents on a larger scale in that society? Unchanging truth. Unchanging truth. I heard somebody say freedom. Go ahead. Different opinions. All of that is, is along the lines of truth because what happens when you write something down, now you have an idea that is alive. Does that make sense? It isn't. Now then the idea has taken root. It's not just a thought anymore. Now it's a living, breathing thing that other people can then join in on. Have you, have you ever seen the movie Gladiator? Mm -hmm. Who has not seen the movie Gladiator? Because I've been having this issue all day. First of all, what's wrong with you people? How have you not seen Gladiator? My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius. You've never seen that? Yes. And I will have my revenge in this life or the next. That's powerful stuff. But there is a scene in the movie where Maximus is talking to one of his allies 
and they're talking about how the, the, the emperor is trying to kill Maximus because he tried to kill him once before and it didn't work out and now he's trying to kill him again. But see, now Maximus coming back as a gladiator is really beloved by the people of Rome. So the emperor can't just kill him because killing him at the height of his popularity would piss off the people and cause him to lose power. So he's trying to figure it out. And at some point in the conversation, his friend says to him, before you can kill the man, you must first kill his name. Right? Before you can kill the man, you got to kill his name. Meaning you have to make him look and seem bad and destroy his reputation, destroy the person, destroy what he represents. Then you can get rid of him anytime you feel like it with no issue, right? So writing in this society is that man. Because writing represents an idea. If you can't write, then the idea can never live. It has no, it has no presence. It has no validity. But once it's on paper, that's it. Now I can spread that idea. Does that make sense? I can spread that. I can take that piece of paper. I can take that book and give it to somebody else. Now that idea has taken root in more than one person. And once the idea starts, it's over. Does that make sense? Huh? This? Yeah. You get that over the course of the book, you find out how Big Brother kind of became Big Brother. Remember that video that we watched um, that explained the basic history of how Oceana and Eurasia, how that, that fictional historical background, if you will, right? So if you think back to that, that's how Big Brother kind of took over. All right, so we've talked about the significance of writing, right? What's a telescreen? It can, yeah, it can, it can not only deliver messages, but it can also, every move you make, every sound, everything. I see it, I hear it, I know what you're doing, right? So, we didn't ask, I didn't ask this about um, Winston's diary. What's the significance of his diary? What do you think it represents? Individuality. Were you here last period? One of the main things we're going to talk about as we move forward is, sim is symbolism. There's a lot, there are a lot of symbols in this book. All right. So it is definitely symbolic of individuality because now that's me taking my thoughts outside of the party and putting them somewhere. Right? Again, that goes back to what we said about ideas. That individuality goes to paper. What? Say it. So hold on, hold on, hold on. I just want to be clear on what just happened. You somehow took one of the greatest literary pieces of fiction ever written, 1984, and somehow related it to the last airbender. <laughs> I just want to make sure that's what happened, because that's actually. Wow. What are you doing, Mr. Johnson? Okay, 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 okay. We'll we'll come back to this. We'll come back to this. We're actually almost done. Oh, 
turned out to be one of the kids. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, yeah, we're gonna. That's that's a really deep rabbit hole. Get deeper. Um, somebody talk to me about the two minutes of hate. Joel. Um, every morning, it's broadcasted on Thursday. Um, it's been over the years, and it's been over the years. Um, one person I can't remember his name, and it means the voters are really mad at it. When you think, and when you get to chapter three here in a little while, there's going to be a term that you learn called double think. We talked about double think before. Um, who's Goldstein? The, go the guy you're talking about is Goldstein. Who is Goldstein? He led a rebellion. You said we don't like him? Carrie, do you know who Goldstein is? Okay. Ooh. Ooh, look at you making religious illusions over there. So he's the angel? He's the angel that, that rebelled against God, a.k.a. Big Brother? Second. And why did he rebel? So, because he believed in things that were diametrically opposed to the ideas of the party, Emmanuel Goldstein, I think it's Emmanuel's first name, believed in freedom of press. Pretty much the entire First Amendment and like half the Bill of Rights, right? Freedom of press, freedom of religion, freedom of speech right to assembly, blah, 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 have your own thoughts. You should be able to write whenever you feel like it, so on and so forth. The party said, no. And they cast him out. And then every day for two minutes, they scream at him. Now, let's take it a little further, though, because we only have one more discussion question. Let's take it a little further. Um, I'm going to say something, and whether you agree with it or not, I need an explanation. Does that make sense? Goldstein is a representation of the very thing that the party fears the most. That's why they spend two minutes every day making sure everybody hates him. So, yes, sir. Agree or disagree? I need your explanation. Go ahead. So, the people that go over it probably know that. And they don't want people to rebel against the government type of society where they rule everything. So they try to get the people to hate him so you can get the hatred and you can control that society. The enemy of my enemy is my friend? Yes, Big Brother's in charge of everything. Joel, you had your hand up. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I'm just like, um, but remember I said earlier, right, and this is why I was asking if you guys had seen Gladiator. Remember I said earlier in the movie, his friend said to Maximus, before you can kill the man, you must first kill his name, right? It's grossly exaggerated his kind of, doesn't have these big plans like he's grossly 
Because what happens, what happens to the idea? Because that's what they were worried about. They, were, they weren't worried about Goldstein. They were more worried about the ideas that he represented. So in a reverse sense, if I make you hate Goldstein, then by default, you will have issue and hate everything that he was, that he represents. So in this case, the man is the idea and vice versa. Does that make sense? Right. Ignorance is strength. Right. So, last thing. Who is O'Brien? Kira? No, Mr. Johnson. Who's, who's O'Brien? Yeah, O'Brien. In chapter one, who is O'Brien? If you, if you don't know by now, somebody help him out. Mm -hmm. oh. Right. Didn't he have what I think it was described as an athletic boxer bill or something to that effect? And right so why did why did winston like him so much that's me saying it it's not we know he liked him the question is why why did he feel the way he felt about o'brien mm -hmm. So now, let's think about that for a second. Not just for now, but for later chapters, right? The whole purpose, not the whole purpose, but one of the biggest things in this society is everybody is, is the crushing of individuality, right? It's not about you, it's about big brother. You all work for big brother. Everything you say, everything you do is in the name of big brother. And then he finds himself relating on an individual level, at least he thinks so, hint, hint, um, to someone else. What do you think that's representative of? What do you think that's symbolic of? Why not double think? What is double think? Right. I think this, I think the very opposite over here, but I think them simultaneously, and I believe both simultaneously. Even though I know they are diametrically opposed, I nonetheless believe them equally. Right. So, why can't that be double thing? Why can't his, uh, whatever it is he feels about O'Brien, why can't that be double thing? Okay, so why is it double thing? You believe what? You believe he believes his yes? Is that what she said? <laughs> he believes yes. Yeah. Yeah. That is his belief system. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> but that's just, I mentioned it because it's something I want you to keep in mind as we go forward. Okay? That's really the main reason. Um, well, I think that thinking forward that O'Brien uh, does think that he's mm -hmm. the opposite. Yes. Power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolute. Yeah. All right, so the next thing I want to show you, ladies and gentlemen, all right, I feel good that you guys have a firm grasp of chapter one. Like I told you, because I did not necessarily assign chapter two, I gave you guys a synopsis of chapter two. 
If you are inclined, however, to go ahead and read chapter two, I absolutely encourage that. But again, here is a, sum a summary of the main events of chapter two. All right, so you don't have to go read it, and nor will you be held responsible for what's in it should we get a quiz on Friday. Hint, hint. It's on the board. It's not like I'm making this up, right? Um, but having said that, you will be responsible for what's in chapter three. Absolutely, all right? So what I've done, just like I did with chapter one, you have a quote unquote copy of the book, but you already, but you guys have copies. So, but here is an online version. If you perhaps for whatever reason misplaced the book, and then you also have an audio copy, an audio book of chapter three. This one, unlike the other one, chapter one, is only about 15, 16 minutes, not a full 34. So that also indicates that chapter three is a little shorter. By, by a significant amount. Once you are done with the chapter, there are some thought questions for you to answer, but instead of five, there's only two. This will be due tomorrow by five. Yes. December 3rd, 5 p.m. So you got the rest of tonight, and you got all of tomorrow. Make sense? And it's only two. It's only two discussion questions. Okay? Huh? Yes, I will be. Yes, they did. So, are there any questions on chapter one, which I think we have a good grasp of? Are there any questions concerning what we're getting ready to do with chapter three? You can. I do not. I think the proles are monitored just as much. However, the focus of the party's attention is not on the proles because they're so, I guess the only word would be ignorant, uneducated, they're so impoverished, they're not considered a threat. Right, like they understand what's really going on. So if you're talking about the Ministry of Truth, you're talking about the Ministry of Peace, whatever, like the people in the party, the outer party, they're more of a threat to what Big Brother is trying to maintain than an uneducated pole who has no concept of life other than get up, go to work. Yeah. Right. I think the one is all I wouldn't necessarily disagree with you on that one. Yeah, it's war for the sake of war. I don't think 